the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's National Center for Environmental Health and the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry are dedicated to a single mission, keeping Americans safe from threats that begin with the very things that we need most in order to live, air, water, food, and our homes. The environment is your health. And our job is to make sure that those environments are healthy for you, so that you have clean water, clean air, safe food, and a safe shelter to live in. Those are the important aspects of the environment, and they play a big role in your health. It's NCEH ATSDR's job to be on alert and to use the best science, the latest research, and the most skilled public health professionals to find those threats and help people cope with them. For example, poor air quality can have a major impact on health. It can worsen heart disease and it can trigger asthma, a chronic disease that affects the lungs, making it difficult to breathe. Almost 25 million people in the United States have asthma and of those, uh, almost 12 million people had an asthma attack in the last year. An asthma attack is something that will come on. Suddenly, people may be sensitive to things that are around them. There are asthma triggers that can cause an asthma attack, and when you have an attack, you have a difficult time breathing. People will need to use a, a medication that we call a quick relief medication to open up their lungs so that they have an easier time to breathe. Just as the last bell rang at school in January 2001, 10-year-old Kellen Bolden, Rhonda Mitchell's son, had a fatal asthma attack. Kellen was at Point South Elementary in Clayton County, and he had his inhaler that day, but the rule was that you needed to get to the nurse to have permission to use your inhaler. Well, he was a very obedient child, so he didn't take his inhaler out. He was trying to make it to the office, but before he could get there, he collapsed, and he didn't get a chance to use it. From that day on, it was important to me to say something to the world saying that when you can't breathe, nothing else matters. And after Kellen's death, I thought long and hard about it and I thought it should be something that I can do or we could do. So with the American Lung Association and Senator Gloria Butler, the CDC, we came up with a plan to get this bill that we had for Kellen implemented and the bill was passed. CDC's National Asthma Control Program and its partners have worked with legislators to pass laws allowing children with asthma to carry and use their own medication at school. Today, all 50 states have passed similar laws, saving children's lives across the nation. The Asthma Control Program is very successful. Not only is the Asthma Control Program keeping children from having asthma attacks, keeping them out of the hospital, and in many cases, keeping them from being killed, but it's also an effective program in terms of cost. For every dollar we spend in the asthma control program, we estimate we save up to $35 in medical costs for people in the United States. Clean water is an issue for the community of Pavilion, Wyoming. Residents suspected their water supply was contaminated as a result of industrial processes. These are the kinds of health concerns ATSDR responds to across the nation. In 2010, the Environmental Protection Agency asked ATSDR to evaluate data that had been collected during well sampling here in Pavilion, Wyoming. This began ATSDR's involvement with the site. We began by talking to community members about what their concerns were and providing a technical evaluation of the public health implications of the data set. There's methane gas in the water, in the soil. So when you bring water out of the faucet, it potentially could ignite and cause a fire. So that's a safety hazard. Then within the water itself, we saw heavy mixtures of salts. And those salts are, are things that can increase blood pressure. They can cause other types of health concerns from just drinking them. Then there are other compounds that appear in the water supply that could have potentially long-term effects, but we don't quite know yet. ATSDR worked with the community to analyze data and equip the community with tools to protect their health. We had a couple of the, the doctors, Michelle Waters and Chris Poulet, came to our homes, sat down, went through our test results with us, and you know answered the, the questions that, that we had in regards to what we were seeing in our water and how it could affect our health. And they're the ones who, who made the recommendation that we need an alternate source of drinking and cooking water. 
bottled drinking and cooking water is now delivered to residents and they are advised to ventilate shower areas and washing machine areas to prevent explosions from the high levels of methane present in their water supply. The ATSDR, they've been at every meeting to make sure that everything's going all right and there is no more you know, bad health problems and everything else and uh, we sure appreciate that and to have somebody care for you know us people means a lot to us and i never seen such professionals i don't think we could do without them communities here like pavilion with concerns about their drinking water often feel alone or isolated they don't have the technical expertise and the access to physicians and to public health experts that it would allow them to make good personal decisions about whether or not they want to drink their water and to be able to plan for the future so this is why it's important for the Agency for Toxic Substances to registry to be engaged with communities such as Pavilion. The National Center for Environmental Health has an environmental public health laboratory that is the best environmental public health laboratory in the world. They do biomonitoring and look for chemicals in your body to tell you how much chemical there is. The biggest success story we had was that data from our laboratory was instrumental in helping to remove lead from gasoline based on calculations done from levels in air and soil and water, it was thought that lead and gasoline actually had a very small effect on people's lead levels. But we actually measured lead in people while we were changing some lead and gasoline in the nation and saw a very tight correlation and EPA used this data to justify the removal of lead from gasoline. That was very big. The NCH activities are incredible activities. Their lead poisoning prevention program prevents lead poisoning across the entire United States. We estimated a savings in healthcare costs for the last 10 years of about $8 billion. These are extraordinarily effective programs. The laboratory program on biomonitoring, when it was first started, was able to look at about 55, 60 chemicals in people's blood and urine. Now we're able to look at 500, and it creates the national debate on what we are exposed to simply by the magnitude of it and the quality of the work that's done there. All of these programs have big impact on people in their homes.